the uh, Mojo Show. That's Swahili for one, by the way, with the lovely Alex Jones. Yes, and Matt Baker. It's an African special tonight, in case you hadn't guessed. Yeah. Now, as well as our wonderful Kenyan dancers, we'll be going live throughout tonight's show to Richard Hammond in Kenya's Masai Mara. Well, unless the lions get him first. Oh, no, he's OK. He's there alive. he is. He's still alive <laughs> at the moment. That's good news. Cannot wait to chat to him. But now, uh, let's say jambo to a man who's been blown up in spooks. Chased serial killers in Whitechapel and confronted bank robbers in Silk. But has he ever experienced Kenyan dancing live? Let's find out. It's Rupert Penry Jones! <laughs> Nice indeed. Uh, just a little wave there. No, none of the arm flapping or anything like no. that as far as the Kenyan dancing. But you've been to Kenya, haven't you? I have been to Kenya, yes. Right. A friend of mine has a house there. Wow. And we went and spent Christmas there. It was fantastic. Did you go on safari? I didn't go on safari in Kenya. I've been on safari in, in Africa. We had a very small... My son was very young at the time. All right. With the say, how can you go to Kenya and not go on safari? Yeah, friends of ours who were there went... But, uh, no, I went in South Africa. It was a very different experience. Then. And did you yeah. see anything in South Africa? No, it was... Uh, a night safari, which sounded really exciting, but actually, uh, you just go around in, with torches and shining your light into the bush, and when you right. see the reflection of animals' lights, they go, oh, that's a lion. Richard oh, that's a uh. was doing that just a little, we just, we just keyed in just to make sure that everything was all right, and he was doing that with torches earlier on, right. yeah, his buffaloes later on. Uh, but if you, if you were to come across an animal in the dark in Africa, which one would you least like it to be? Least like yeah. it to be? Something small, I think. When you go on safari, you want to see one of the big ones. Yeah. You want to see yeah. the lion. So I... Absolutely. Good. Well, on that note, they do say that uh, good things come to those who wait. But after a lifetime's work, Glaswegian artist and writer Alistair Gray is finally getting the recognition that he deserves for his mural paintings. Phil Tufnell went to meet a man who's becoming a true Scottish cultural hero. You can find art in some very surprising places. Huge. Absolutely huge now, I think. But he's a... a a popular figure rather than an establishment figure. He's getting to national treasure status, even if he doesn't want to be now, you know? All the guys that were young and rebellious in the 50s when he was starting out at Glasgow Art School and now running the country. So no matter how much he might resist it, there's been a real embracing of Alistair's work in the last few years particularly. And what things define an Alistair Gray mural? I think it's all defined by the word democratisation. He's always used ordinary people in amongst great historical figures. And he draws those together consciously in order to be able to show that everyone, everywhere, is worth the same. But this artist is not just a painter. He also writes. And his book, Lanark, published in 1981, brought him international acclaim. It made it onto one list of the best novels of all time. In his early days as an artist, though, Alistair Gray was a hungry man in Glasgow. And that's what brought him to the ubiquitous chip. I was lucky enough to meet him here. He gave me the inside story of the murals that decorate the restaurant and an insight into their creation. Mural painting is not a matter of painting small pictures on a big scale. It has to be seen close up or from any distance. And how did he come to paint the murals here? I was friendly with the owner at a point when I was rather short of money. suggested that if I could eat here, I would um, decorate a wall over there, which I did. And what is it about mural painting that appealed especially to you? Exhibitionism. Sheer vanity. Uh, wanting my work to be seen by as many people as possible and not by a few rich folk who can buy it as a form of non-taxable banking. Alistair then gave me a very special guided tour of his own work. So, Alistair, what's going on here? A lot of people in pleasant surroundings, at least that's the intention, members of the staff who are friends of mine, and a customer, who's yeah. a friend of mine. Were these cut out? Yes, yeah. uh, they were drawn on paper, cut out, pasted on, and then tinted. How long did it take you to do all of it? I worked on it at different periods for over 20 years. Of course, it's beginning to deteriorate, everything does, partly from vandalism. Somebody tried to put a moustache and clear my pad in there. If a thing's in hand's reach, what else can you expect? And what was the overall effect that you were trying to achieve? It? Arcadia! Arcadia. Friendly people enjoying themselves in friendly, slightly rural surroundings. They all look very happy. All got a drink in their hair. The murals are certainly a talking point in the restaurant. It's now run by Colin Clydesdale. He's the son of the original owner who commissioned Alistair to do the work. And what are the customers like of them? Those that know what they are love them. And some people are, are you know, sometimes halfway through a mural suddenly realise they're there. 
because they really blend beautifully into the background. Art in restaurants is usually designed to match the tablecloths as, as part of a concept. That's not the case here. I think I have to concede their art, Alistair, is all about art. But they have been here so long now. I mean, the Sistine Chapel, is it art or is it just the ceiling? Alistair Gray is a fascinating man. He could have just been a great writer, but he also chose to paint. And that's something the art world should be very thankful for. I love that place. One of my very good friends used to work there. And you've been in there yourself. We were just trying yes, lovely yes. food. And, yeah, uh, what did you say earlier that he was the speciality? Uh, the nine still be something or other. Anyway, it's a delight if you pass by. Go and have a look at the paintings and enjoy okay. the food. Uh, but now on uh, Sunday Night Planet Earth uh, Live introduced us to a wonderful cast of global wildlife. Yes, we hear Richard Hammonds had an unexpected visitor in his Masai Mara TV tent. Richard, are you there? Are you safe? Are you well? Yeah, I'm all right. We are being circled by a single buffalo at the moment, which are particularly dangerous, but it's okay. We have men with torches to fend them off, so we'll be fine. Brilliant, Richard. We'll just let you know you're on our massive telly in the studio, so it feels like you're actually in the studio. But the uh, last time you were here uh, on the couch, you said to us that it was going to be an ambitious project. But in general, I mean, obviously you've had the weather to contend with, but how has it been for you? It's astonishing. The weather we expected, it is the rainy season, that's why we're here now. Yes, it's ambitious, linking up with units all around the world, following these animals day by day to bring their stories to you. It's astonishing. I will say, I mean, personally, it's a fulfilment of a life ambition yeah. to make natural history shows and to make one like this that is unique and a first. It's just, it's a privilege for all of us, really, the whole team to be here doing it. So we're loving it, but it's hard. That's good. Yeah, how hard is it then to tell these stories live? It's, that's the real challenge because we're used to, you know, the BBC makes the most beautiful and authoritative natural history documentary programs that take months to put together. But all of our teams around the world are following these animals, these young animals at these challenging times, day by day to get their stories ready and crafted and show to you in the live shows in the evening. So it's, it's a phenomenal challenge, but that's, that's at the heart of it. To bring you the stories as they happen is daily dramas. So we have to make it that close to showing it to you. It's, it's fabulous. And talking of those animals and those stories, Richard, uh, you introduced all the viewers back here to Moja, the little lion cub. Now, we saw him struggling for survival, so what's the latest on him and how is he coping? Well, a lot of people showing a lot of interest in young Moja, and we kind of knew they would. He's okay. He's thin. He's, he's okay. And we'll, it's, it's a very, very difficult time for him right now, but he's uh, there is all on his own which is another problem for him, as we'll be discussing this evening, actually. He needs the company of other lions around him to help grow. But uh, he's OK. He's with us still. Yeah. And you said earlier that you could see some buffalo outside the tent, but you've also had an elephant, haven't you, visit? Yeah, we have had an elephant in the camp. There's no fences out there between us and the Masai Mara, so um, an elephant came in and, well, it knocked down a tree, is what it did. Yeah, the tree is <laughs> now on its side. It's an elephant, it can is your thermal camera up and running at the moment? And can we have a look outside and see what's there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me show you. It's over here. Um, it's, it's right in the distance by our satellite dishes. That's how we're connecting to you. Oh, and, wow. Um, on board, you can see Sue running the camera. And I think we show you the images from the thermal image camera. There we have. Hi, Hello, Sue. If we pan it across, she can, keep, <laughs> hello, she can keep an eye out for us to see what... There you see, there's buffalo in the distance. Wow, Quite a lot lovely. of them, thoughtfully and thankfully they're in the distance. They do get closer, they are very confident. The lone buffaloes are usually the males who have been chucked out of a herd and they're just in a bad mood. There was oh. one we filmed just before we came live with you, mooching about by the trees. But it's okay, I'm not scared, we have men with torches to look after us, so that'll be fine. <laughs> Well, Richard, do look after yourself, because we're going to be chatting to you a little bit later on in the programme. We'll find out what you've got in store for us tonight. Yep, talk to you later. Thanks, Good Richard. stuff, good stuff. Now, Rupert, we are going to be talking about the 